Hi there, I'm SmallAnt1, and welcome to my beginner's guide to the Super Mario Odyssey Any% Percent Snow and Seaside Kingdom route. In this video, I'll be showing you the basic path through the kingdoms, describing the movement, and explaining any tricks you may find difficult. There are timestamps in the video description if you want to skip to a particular section, but let's get started. Here's what a good beginner snow kingdom looks like, and I'll wait until after it's done to talk about it.
All right, so there's Snow Kingdom. The very first thing to mention here has to do with the order in which you'll be doing Snow in Seaside Kingdom. If at the end of Metro Kingdom you have at least 100 coins, then you'll be going to Snow Kingdom first as it's the default option. But if you have less than 100 coins, you'll need to travel to Seaside first as Seaside will likely bring the coin total up to 100 for when you need to purchase the moon in Snow Kingdom next. To start Snow Kingdom off, roll down the slopes and dive down to the lower section Roll along the lower section into the water, dive and roll into the water again, then dive and roll up to the hidden toad. Stand still and talk to toad to get a moon, then roll right back down the hill, jump and dive across the water, then jump and cap jump over the wall, then just jump and ground pound down into Shavaria. After the stun animation, jump and dive backwards, then triple jump towards the wall, throw cappy left, dive, then wall jump up to the moon. You can also wall jump up these boxes if you'd like, but it's a bit slower than the triple jump. After collecting the moon, dive and roll over to the shop. Buy a moon, and then roll out. After leaving the shop, dive and jump onto an umbrella, then cap jump, cap throw, wall jump, cap throw, and dive onto the bridge. The umbrella on the right is a tiny bit faster. I find this one a bit harder as the wall jump is done from the bridge and if the wall jump is done too high, it will send Mario downwards. You might find the right side is easier than the left, so try both and see which one is more consistent for you. After diving up, open the chest and grab the moon, then dive and roll down the hallway, then roll down the hill to the next moon. Ground pound in the glowing spot near the corner to reveal the moon, now dive and jump downwards into the Taifu room. Start the room off with a ground pound roll, then jump and dive past the Taifu, then jump over the spinies onto the wooden block. Once the wooden block is done moving, face away from the wooden wall, then backflip and cap jump onto the X to ground pound it. If you move fast enough for this beginning section, you can have Mario land on the wooden block early enough to ground pound it and jump during the slide. Mario will keep the speed from the block movement and be able to jump right onto the wooden wall from there. After the wooden wall, cab jump and dive over the spinies to capture the Taifu. Move the Taifu to the right, then blow from right to left using motion controls. Once all the spinies have been blown off, leave the Taifu and dive down to get the moon. After collecting the moon, you'll watch a lovely, unskippable cutscene. Once it's over, dive and ground pound into the pipe. From the pipe, roll to the right and enter the Goomba room. Start rolling, then roll boost twice. It's easy to fall off the ice here, so to prevent that, during the rolling, you can leave the control stick alone. After roll boosting twice, stop the roll and cap throw twice to capture the left Goomba. Jump this Goomba on the other one to stack them, then run across the narrow bridge. Walk over to the shadow on the ground, stacking a Goomba on the way if it's convenient. Then after quickly standing under it, stack the remaining Goomba. Jump onto the ice block, then do a motion control jump to land directly on the Goomba button. With the Goombas on the button, hop out and dive over to the newly revealed moon. From this moon, dive over, then long jump and cap jump across the big gap to the next moon. Getting across this gap can be done a little faster with a ground pound roll and throwing Cappy to change direction and triple jump. This jump is easier than it looks, but is still a pretty difficult strat. I wouldn't recommend it for beginners, I just wanted to include it here so you're aware of it. Once Mario is across the gap, collect the moon, watch another riveting cutscene, then long jump into the pipe. If you walk forward slightly, then long jump, and continue to hold the Z button after landing on the pipe, Mario will be sucked in instantly. However, if you long jump too early, then Mario will bonk, so be careful. Once out of the pipe, dive and roll to the left and enter the room with the Rango fight. Roll and jump over to the post. Tear it out of the ground with Cappy, then backflip and cap throw to rise up nice and fast. Dive at the top, then triple jump and cap jump onto the next gust of wind, then cap throw and dive to get onto the next platform. Walk through the soft snow wall, and move around to get the final moon. After getting this moon, just warp to the Odyssey and finish off Snow Kingdom. 
One last thing to mention here, if you've watched some high level runs, you may have seen some runners skip the shop until after the Goomba room, then purchase the moon, warp back to the Odyssey, jump onto it and do an insane jump over to the painting platform for the final moon. This jump is crazy hard and you shouldn't consider trying it until you are very good. I'd say it would be worth trying once your personal best time is around an hour and five minutes or so. That's the end of the Snow Kingdom guide though, you're Seaside Kingdom now. Alright, so there's Seaside Kingdom. It has some tough jumps at the start, but once those are done, it's one of the most straightforward kingdoms in the run. To start off, have Mario dive, centering the camera during the dive, jump twice, then backflip, cap jump, wall jump, cap throw, and dive onto the grass, jump up onto the ledge, and backflip, then cap jump, cap throw towards the wall, wall jump on this face of the wall, cap throw, and dive up to the moon. This jump to the moon can be a challenge for beginners, so if you have trouble, you can always take an extra second to line up the camera before the backflip. Or if that's not working for you, a triple jump makes this a lot easier too. After this moon, jump down and enter the pipe. The moon in this room is similar to the rumbling room in sand. With this moon, have Mario dive right away, then jump and ground pound. 
The dive, jump, and ground pound gives Mario the perfect distance to hit the moon. After getting the moon, dive and roll right out. Back outside, do a cap jump and roll over to the opening in the wall. Stand on the dirt line, facing outwards. Do a backflip, cap jump, wall jump, cap throw to the right, and dive to get up. Once up, just jump and cap jump into the moon. The camera in this little area makes it look like it's two-dimensional, but Mario can still miss the moon if you're too close to the sides. A good visual cue to know if Mario's gonna get the moon or not is if Cappy collects the coins before the cap jump, then Mario should collect the moon. If Cappy doesn't collect the coins, then just get ready to wall jump after to collect the moon. After collecting this moon, cap jump and dive to get out. Then walk around the corner and roll across the grass, down onto the sand, over to the rocket flower. When Mario has a rocket flower, he can be fairly difficult to control, so take your time to get Mario, the flower, and the note in a straight line before throwing Cappy. Once Cappy returns with the rocket flower, if you lined up Mario correctly, then you should be able to leave the control stick alone and Mario will collect all of the notes automatically. If the angle was a bit off, then you can very gently nudge the control stick to correct Mario's course. Once all of the notes have been collected, a moon will appear on the floating block, jump over to that, then jump onto the block beside it, and jump over to the Gushin to capture it. During the capture of the Gushin, move the camera over to where you want to go, then hold Y to quickly travel over to the area near this checkpoint, leave the Gushin and Ground Pound into the water, then after the Ground Pound animation is finished, throw Cappy to capture a fish. Swim the fish over to the chest, using B and Y to boost. Anything after the first boost with the fish does nothing. I'm doing it here for no real reason other than to keep my hands busy. At the chest, do a shake to have the fish attack and open the chest, get the moon, then boost out, and again, anything after the first boost is unnecessary. Swim over to the small tunnel and enter it. If you travel into a wall with the fish, then the fish will bonk as seen here. This was unintentional, so try to fish bonk as little as possible. Swim through the tunnel, and if you entered seaside first due to a lack of coins, be sure to collect these 40 coins in here. Swim through and get the moon, boost and leave the tunnel, Go up and around towards the Kombus. Motion control shake to attack the mound and reveal a moon. Collect it, boost, and swim over to Dory. Dory's position may be a bit different depending on how slow or fast you are, so keep that in mind when trying to find her. Collect the moon under her belly and swim over to the area with the four mounds. Shake to attack the outside mound, then boost and shake on the next, then boost and shake on the third, and finally, boost and shake on the center mound to reveal the moon. Each shake will spawn some kombus. They aren't necessary to get rid of, so you can just ignore them if they're not in the way. After this moon, swim down until you see a hole in the wall, swim in, uh, uh, don't fish bonk, then go downwards to get the final moon. Now just open the map and warp to the Odyssey to finish off Seaside Kingdom. That's the end of the guide for these two kingdoms. If I forgot any details or if you have any helpful tips, feel free to leave them in the comments below. They are much appreciated. But thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, I'm SmallAnt1, and I'll see you next time.